biggest fraud on TV. I think this is who wants to be a millionaire. I don't know if bro or whoever this is scammed that, but uh, honestly, f wants to be a millionaire. The game is dog. The game is a scam. If y'all, I'm giving y'all a recommendation right now. If you don't tune into the streams, don't ever buy the game because the game, it's just bad. I mean, I'm really good at the game, but like, it's just, you know, it's just, it's like the questions are dumb. It's just, there's no point. Sore loser W. I'm not coping. What am I coping about? All right, you know what? 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 what whatever, man. Let's let's just watch the video. It's September 9th, 2001. Okay. Interesting date. It's two days from a certain day. I don't know why I just picked up on that, but I did. British host Chris Tarrant welcomes eight contestants to timing. Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Mm. They're all eager to get rich, but to sit on the hot seat... Did they cancel this show, by the way? Like, I really want to be... I feel like I could do this. I don't know why they canceled... Actually, really thinking of it, did they give everybody a million dollars? Because, like, there had to be at least, like, five or six... That's, like, a lot of money. Especially back then, too. This is, like, before inflation and whatnot. This is probably the, this is probably the equivalent to, like, three mil now or something. Only like two people. I wonder when, when did they end it? Hold up. Yo, I think it's still going. Hold up. Say you swear this is going. Oh yeah, y'all gonna see me on here soon. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be first black contestant to win. I don't know what's happening, but I'm doing it. Alright. I need I need I, <laughs> it seems like an easy come up. It you have to win fastest finger first. Mm. Put these words in the order they occur in the title of the Agatha Christie thriller. Yeah, never mind. I lost. I will lose. <laughs> if they're gonna ask old head questions like this, bro, I'm not winning this. Shit. Bro, like, no wonder the biggest fraud, bro. I'm not surprised somebody cheated on this. Shit. What the f are these questions, bro? You gotta be over like, uh, like seven years old and know. Who was Agatha Christie? Am I, am I just out, out of the, out of the loop? Nile on death the. The correct answer is death on the Nile. All these were correct. <laughs> Most of them, nearly all of them. Uh, who was fastest? Charles Ingram in 3.97. Three, three That's so fast. <laughs> three seconds. Major Charles Ingram wild. has been a contestant twice before. Now he finally gets his chance. Confidently, mm. he takes his place. But this confidence doesn't last long. Ingram is often unsure of his answers. After just 7 out of 15 questions, he merely has one of his three jokes. Bro, the jump is also crazy. How do you go from like 16,032.64? Then you go from 250 to 500 and a million. God damn. Nah, for me personally, bro, if I if I got to 64k, I'll be good and I'm stopping. Joker's left. I cheat but on this two. I need a million dollars desperately. To answer correctly again and again. And then the time has come. Just one more correct answer separates him from one million pounds. A mm. number one followed by 100 zeros is known by what name imagine the pressure you have on google. you google when, when, when you're on this last question megatron isn't it google gigabit nanomole i don't think i've heard of a google but seconds later even though he never heard of a google he completely this changes his easy? guess wait i would win this think it's a google the tension in the studio is almost unbearable. I would win this thing. Just one million. Everybody knows this. Damn. Only two people managed to achieve that before him. An incredible run against all odds. Maybe too incredible. In fact, mm. Major Charles Ingram cheated. He is quite possibly the biggest fraud who has ever been on television. He and his accomplices have been tried. Be real though, that's badass, bro. Cause how do you cheat on live TV? Like in front of a whole studio? I, I don't know how bro pulled this off, but goddamn bro. Might, might as well let him keep the million dollars, bro. He put in all this effort to do it. Like, like let, let him keep it. Then convicted. Their heist has been publicized and fictionalized. Yet mm. to this day, they maintain their the innocence. The answers on his arm. We didn't do it. We really didn't cheat. 20 years later, there are still a lot of open questions. And behind mm. Ingram's case lurks an even weirder story. One of an underground organization that systematically exploited the show for years. How did they do it? No way he just like paid off some employees or something.
While Ingram is celebrating his victory in front of the camera, there's turmoil behind the scenes. I don't think it would be too hard to figure out. The showrunners are sussed out. Especially since the sound technician already called their CEO Paul Smith while Ingram was still answering questions. Smith told them to keep the show going. Ingram receives a check with his winnings from Tarrant. But Damn. the check is retained by Celador, the company behind the show, for eight days for processing. In the meantime, Smith and the technicians look back at so them. So it's dead ass a million dollars. Like I thought it would have been like after taxes, they would have took some shit. Maybe they did take something after taxes or whatever, but they actually give you a Okay, that might sound stupid, but like, I don't know, bro. Like, you know how the lottery is too. Cause the lottery, they just be taking like half of the money for, for taxes or whatever. Damn. Material. Ingram often seemed to have no clue really. How did this nah, guy, stupid, after being really left with everything. one joker at 4,000 pounds, snatched a million? The probability of just guessing a one in four seven times in a row plus a one in two is 0.003%. No way, right? They look at his speech pattern when They're thinking around the same price answers. Answers. Is it more? Craig David, I think it's more actually. I just can't. I don't think I've, I've never heard of Craig David, to be honest. There's something interesting happening here. No matter the question, mm. Ingram goes through all four possible answers, often chronologically, repeatedly. Emmental is a cheese from which country? Uh, it could be France, I suppose. Then again, it could be Italy, so. Um, or maybe it's the Netherlands. Right. <laughs> yes. That's sort of how the question works, John. Nah, not a, yeah, I would have caught on that too, because, like, what is the point of saying that? Immediately, when, like, if I was to do some shit like this, I would just eliminate two answers. I'd be like, all right, it's obviously not here and here. You're not about to go individually one by one to each one. I don't know. I feel like that, that that's suspicious. I, I can definitely see how they caught on. Oh, I get that in itself might still be quite normal behavior. It seems fairly rational to go one by one if you're not sure. But then... Who was the second husband of Jacqueline That's not Kennedy, how I would do it. Adnan Khashoggi, Ronald Reagan, <laughs> Aristotle Anassis. Like, for me, if I got Ronald Reagan, I'm like, all right, clearly that's like the f***ing... That was the president after, bro. The president after is not marrying the previous president's wife. And then this nigga in chat said Obama. Yeah, you are not on Earth with us. I don't know where you are right now. Rupert Murdoch. Probably not okay. BNC. Um, I'm not that's certain. what I would do. I would just eliminate... I would have thought. I would have thought that it would be Aristotle and Assis. <coughs> Why? Wait, someone coughed just now at the correct option. Aristotle and Assis. <coughs> Bro, how loud is that fing cough? Holy shit! I've been sick, and I, like, you gotta realize they're far away too in the stance, and the cough is like. <laughs> It's, it's like when you try to cough or, or sneeze or something like that to try, to hide your fart. Like, that shit is not going to work, bro. It's going to go through either way. W stride W. That is smart, but that, imagine how loud that cough is. Like, to us, it sounds low, but the cough is probably like this in, in the audience. It's probably that loud. But to us, it sounds small because, like, the mics are far away from them, far away from the audience. Aristotle Onassis was indeed married to Kennedy. Huh. And then it happens again. But the reason I think it's cricket is because. And again. I think it was Holbein. <laughs> the studio There's obviously no way they didn't has pick cameras that up. and mics for the candidate and the show host, but it also has cameras and mics pointed at the audience for reaction shots. The technicians start looking at what's happening in the crowd while Ingram is reading <laughs> out the options. Who is coughing and always at the right time? Which American platform was founded in 2012 and is known for its creative and interactive Oh my god, Khan Academy. I think I noticed one off rip. I'm so smart if I get this. Of ...online lessons. A. Biscuit. B. Bilingual. C. Bicycle. D. Brilliant. Never mind. Oh, it's brilliant though. It's brilliant. You already know it. Brilliant is a great way to learn new- Yo, this is actually the best sponsor transition I've ever seen. Bro, I gotta clap it up for the- that's actually the best sponsor transition I've ever seen. Yo, he got it, bro. Shit, now I want to actually buy the product. But, uh, this is a Tom Energy reaction. Last night on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Who Wants to Be a Millionaire was a sensation in the UK at the time. The mm. show was just four years old and at its height about 19 million people tuned yeah. in. A third of the entire population. People were obsessed with it. That was also the case with Charles it, Ingram and his wife, on. Diana. Her brother Adrian Pollock had been on the show four times before, on the hot seat once, and won £32,000. 
A few months mm. later, she managed to get on the hot seat and won £32,000 as well. Just I remember talking skin. to her in the bar afterwards, and I said, great, congratulations. She said, yeah, only 32. And I said to her, it's a huge amount of money. She went, yes, but I should have done more. I should have beaten my brother and all this. Mind you, it is incredibly difficult to get a spot on this show. Thousands, if not millions of people try. The selection process mm. is brutal. But this family managed to get in over and over again. They knew they the system inside dirt. out and how to play it. Adrian even had a mock-up fastest finger first console at home. He and Diana wanted to publish a book with tips on how to get on the show. But as it turns out, they were not the only ones who knew the system. And some were a lot Damn. better at exploiting it. 250k? Who wants to be a millionaire is not broadcast live and has a set runtime. So when Charles finally gets his shot, filming stops for the day after the 4,000 pound question. And I remember us saying, God, that poor bloody major, you know, he's, he's got as much chance of getting the 32,000, you know, as going to the moon in a rocket. I mean, he, there was just no way this guy could, could possibly go much further. And I'm sorry, bro, but like some British talk is, is so funny. Like he said, he's got a mu it's much time, yeah? Is, is, is the moon going to the rock? That's like just some funny terminology, bro. Like, shout out to the UK, but like, bro, yeah. Sometimes y'all be doing it to yourself. I can't tell if it's just this dude. I don't know if it's just like old British slang or whatever, but that was just like, I don't know why though. That, that was just funny. Vicious Diana is frustrated with Charles. That would make sense because Charles is a smart man. He holds university degrees in engineering and management and will later be accepted by Mensa. That mm. evening, as the couple is on their way home on the M4, their frustrations likely intensify as they dwell on the opportunity for immense wealth slipping away right from under their grasp. They will not let that happen. Diana and Charles call Tequin Whitok. He's a Welsh college lecturer and a fellow game language. show enthusiast. Adrian and Diana have been training Tequin and helping him to get on the show. He's supposed to be a candidate tomorrow, so he will be in the studio. Mm. Charles, Diana and Tequin are on the phone for five minutes they supposedly devise a very simple, yet effective plan. Charles reads out the answers. Whoever knows the answer coughs when it comes up. Have you got a strategy? Um, but that means the people there had to know it too. Like they don't have phones. Well, this is before smartphones even. They kind of, wait, now that I think of it, he kind of deserves the one. Nah, he doesn't. But like, how did they remember it? Now, I guess they're just smart as or something. I don't know. Well, I have actually. I have got a strategy. I was a bit um, defensive on the last show. You know, I sort of started talking myself out of um, out of answers that, frankly, I should have known and did know. Um, so this time, I'm going on the counterattack. This counterattack obviously works. Though he repeatedly says he has no idea or never heard of certain options, he goes on to 180 pivot seconds later. Craig David, I just can't. I don't think I've, I've never heard of Craig David, to be honest. I've just never heard of Craig David, so... No, I'll go Craig David. <laughs> yeah. You just won 32,000 pounds. <laughs> I don't think it's Paris. Bro, it's the way he repeats it. <laughs> yeah, I know for... You know for a fact he's there like... I, I never heard of a, of, a, of a Craig David. Like a Craig David, that just sounds like... That sounds like... That sounds like such a weird name. Nah, like, it doesn't even... <clears throat> oh, I'm going with Craig David. I'm going with Craig David. It is Craig David. Dude, you couldn't be more obvious. I swear, if I was on this show, bro, I'm not gonna lie, I would be smart and like put the answers in my in my glasses or something like that. That was I, I could tell this shit. I can tell this shit. No shit, the producers could tell it. I would have stopped the show. I think it's Berlin. I'm gonna go Probably for Paris. Probably took notes. You thought it was Berlin, Berlin, Berlin. You change your mind to Paris. That brought you five hundred thousand. I don't think I've heard of a Google. I don't actually know what a Google is, but. <laughs> I really do think it's a Google. <laughs> you just won one million! Back behind the scenes, a total of 192 coughs have been recorded so by the so microphones stupid. in the studio. A lot of them when a correct answer was mentioned. Paul Smith is confident this can't be a coincidence and mm. calls the police. Later, he makes another call. Mr. Ingram, we didn't meet. I am the managing director of Celador. Right. Um, I think I should just get straight to the point yep. and effectively say what is a pre-prepared statement here. I have yeah. heard that we have suspicions from viewing the recording of last Monday's uh, program and subsequently studying the tapes carefully that there were irregularities during the taping of the show 
in which you participated. Oh, good lord, no. Because of that, I have to tell you that these suspicions have been- the, the proper talk is just killing me. He got- his ass got caught. <laughs> I couldn't imagine getting caught and then building up- building it up. And then they're like, hmm, well, we have suspicions on- 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 on the way you put together the answers and- and the way it was built up to- uh, take out F- I don't know, it's just the way he builds up the answers. ...being referred to the police. Right. Yeah, ...and thus, free for not for the moment, will be airing the program or indeed authorizing payment of the check. Right. Damn. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I completely refute that, obviously. Um, bro, like, you don't even sound emotional. You gotta be like, Nah, bro! Nah, I earned that shit with all my might. And I'll be damned if y'all let that happen. Don't ever- He's like, well, I mean, uh, obviously I refute the claims and what are you talking about? What, what, what are you talking about? Have some emotion in your body. No shit you got caught. Cool, thanks. All right, well, thanks for letting me know. Okay, thank you. Mm, okay, bye. One and a half years later, the case went to trial. It quickly mm. turned into a tabloid frenzy. The story of major fraud was just too sensational. In the end, all three defendants were found guilty. Two Damn. documentaries were made. The Ingrams never accepted the verdict. We didn't cheat on that show. There was no plan to cheat on that show. I won that money perfectly honest. Isn't it illegal to like lie after you like confess to be guilty or like you're proven guilty by the court? Can't you like not lie? So he's just lying. You could probably be taken to court for lying like on that alone. Bro, just let it go, man. It's over. And fairly and squarely. And while I was- And that's how you do a cough. You heard how it was quiet? I don't know if it sounded quiet on the mic. Not a- <laughs> Not like that. Sitting there in the center of the studio, I did not notice any coughing at all. I was entirely unaware of it. As for the victims, I've heard a lot of people say that this is a, a victimless crime. Well, actually, there are victims. The three defendants were the victims. We should not have been found guilty on the evidence that was presented in court. We were found guilty on a very good story. Why did you cough then, Diana? I, I think I needed to clear my throat. The cuffs were just <laughs> coincidental, according to them. Wittok suffered no, from a persistent bruh. cough all his life. The coughing footage presented in the court had been edited by Celador to accentuate the coughs. Also, why would three intelligent people not come up with a smarter way to cheat? At least code the coughs. If the answer is C, cough on D. Bro, it's the fact, like, maybe two or three every single question? Come on, bro, that's not edited. No, no, that, that doesn't even make any sense. And so on. Wittok, who supposedly coughed 19 times to hint at the correct answers, flopped when he was in the hot seat. Why mm. was he so all-knowing when supposedly helping Charles? And why would he join such a scheme? How could he have made sure he actually got his share of the money? And perhaps most importantly, <laughs> was coughing in the audience even audible on stage? People cough like mad. Everybody's coughing in the studio because they're sort of enclosed or whatever. I had no idea. There was so much noise in the studio that night. It was like a madhouse. People were screaming, they were cheering. The 2014 book Bad Show casts a lot of doubts on the trial. Similarly mm. did the show Quiz. But playing the devil's advocate, wouldn't Wittok's chronic illness also be a brilliant a cover? Cough. If he was just a man nah, that who coughed worse. constantly, who would suspect these coughs to be hints? Simple, yes but also brilliantly hiding in plain sight. I mean, More the generally. whole studio's quiet though, that's the thing. It's like, yeah, it's a big room or whatnot, but it's not, they, they, I think I'm pretty sure they edit the music in after, like they're not playing the music right there. Cause like, that would just be confusing. It's like a family view too. They don't, they don't play the music and stuff like that. Or at least I don't think they do. So you could hear a loud ass cough in like a big ass auditorium room. How likely is it that 19 significant cuffs <laughs> the reason I think are just a coincidence? Liam Shaw made a fascinating statistical analysis to answer this very bro, they br question. Bro, they're breaking the statistics down like it's a like it's a like it's a study, bro. Like like it's a real like study. Like they're studying the population or like something really important, like demographics. What are we doing? What are we doing? God damn! I didn't know. Like, I'm surprised it's this big. Like, they got caught f coughing, bro, for a million dollars. Like, the nigga got caught. Why is it so big? 
And I remembered the case from when I was a child. And I was very interested in the statistics of the unlikeliness of the coughing coming after the correct answers. So、mm. I wanted to investigate that for myself.、Mm. And so I just attempted to do that because it was locked down and I couldn't leave the house. So <laughs> I found a way to entertain myself, basically. The chance for Wittok's 19 cuffs to be coincidental within the time frame the show was filmed is incredibly low. If these were his only coughs, and say that half of all of those 192 coughs were Tekvin Wittek. It was 192, bro. <laughs> and you gotta think of it also. How many people pulled up like sick there? How many? How many people would actually pull up sick there? Like it's rare that you have a bunch of just sick people in the same spot. I'm pretty sure they probably they probably would have tested that before they got there to make sure they weren't sick. I mean, I don't know. Maybe this is 01. This is 2001. Maybe they were like testing as much or didn't really care if you were sick. You could just come. But what? Then in the statistical trials that I ran, this isn't a hospital. I found that the probability of getting at least 19 coughs. Would be about eight percent. This ignores the fact that Diana likely too coughed at significant moments. The analysis I did was just for fun, and it's quite silly. But what it convinced me of is that there's no real dispute about the fact that there is some sort of association between coughs and correct answers. Looking at Shaw's math, the coughs were probably not random, but this clearly was a case of trial by media. According to the New York Times, the actual trial should have been a lot more extensive and critical. They are not sure if there would have been enough evidence to prove guilt. And just as the Ingrams were in the spotlight, another group quietly gamed the show for years. But the years. crazy thing is, he could have got a stranger too. Like I don't know who that woman is to him. Honestly, don't remember. But why didn't they just like pay off a random stranger to do it? Like go to Harvard, Harvard, whatever, Columbia University, get a random. Stranger, be like, all right, I'll give you a percentage if you do this, and you're not even linked to them. But hey, yes, maybe I gotta do this. Petty Spooner was the first person to appear like on、me. multiple versions of the show. He won two hundred fifty thousand dollars in Australia, two hundred fifty thousand pounds in the UK,、mm. and one thousand euros in Ireland. He、mm. knew how to get on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and made no secret of it. Well, in England,、uh, seven million people phone in. I worked out the population is a lot smaller, and given that most people wait until they've watched the program before phoning in, so I made my calls in one evening. Two hundred and fifteen in one evening. Yeah, I'm a pretty boring bloke. His runs were ice cold, focused, with confident, decisive answers. The last convicts transported from Britain arrived in Fremantle in which year? 1868. A. 1848. B. 1858. C. 1868. D eighteen seventy eight. I'll play and I'll lock in C eighteen sixty eight. He had a go. Bruh, this dude might be him. Hold up, is he a cheater? Don't tell me it turns out he's a cheater. This dude got the answer before they even gave the answers. Nah, I don't think he's cheating. Go before he even came up, didn't? He? All right, let's lock it in. Patty, you want a quarter of a million dollars? <laughs> He dropped out of college and lived off of pub quizzes before going professional. After、mm. bombing on the Irish version, Spooner met Keith Burgess. Burgess had helped people to get on the show for a fee. They teamed up to take that business to the next level. Yeah, Burgess and Spooner built an underground syndicate called、that's、the Consortium. They the provided a service to reliably get people on the show and to maximize their winnings. Step one: Get the call. They would spend thousands of pounds and a lot of hours dialing the show's premium rate registration lines. Once through, they played recordings of their clients, leaving messages with their name and number. Step two:、mm. Stall. Once the client got a call back from the show producers, they would answer that he or she wasn't home at the moment. A member of the consortium would then race to the client's home to help with step three: Get close. Potential contestants had to answer a closest to question on the phone. Say, how tall is Big Ben? 96 meters is correct, but 93 or 100 will do. Spooner figured out that these questions were always pulled from the office Bro, for. Are they legit moving this shit? Like, I would never think it's this complicated. I would think like you just pay some random dude on the fucking show, like some underground dude, TV producer, just pay him like I don't know a thousand dollars and just let you in. This is actually the, you got to call this person. You can't answer the phone, but this person has to answer. They have to get it. God damn, bro! 
Maybe I'm not built for this. National Statistics Database and that they were asked in rotation. Step four, make fingers fast. Reminiscent of the Ingrams, consortium clients would practice on modeled buzzers. Step five, fake a friend. Okay, this is for sure the craziest part. Once a client was on the hot seat and used the phone a friend joker, the consortium would reroute this call to a safe house. A neutral person called The Voice would pick up on a phone with a silent mute button. In the room, loads of facts laid out on the floor. Paddy, Keith, a guy named John, a pop culture expert, Poppy at a computer with Google open, and Crack the Bricky, whoever that was. The consortium the secured 200 spots on the show from 2002 to 2007. 55 clients made it to the hot seat, winning 4.2 million pounds. That's 26% of- Nigga, I'm confused as f y'all. I promise y'all, I don't know what the f just went through. All I know is that they got somebody muted. I, I think it's talking about somebody can hear them through it. They can hear the facts or whatever going on, so they know it, I think. <laughs> oh my god, bro all the money won on the show during that period. They only stopped mm. because the producers didn't give people second chances anymore if they weren't home, so step two fell apart. 25% mm. of the winnings went to Keith Burgess and Paddy Spooner. They published Damn. a book about their operation in 2021. None of what they did was illegal. It had no consequences for them. <laughs> Spooner even met Paul Smith in 20... Bro, I'm not gonna lie, that's a crazy come up. Could you imagine, bro, if I'm the CEO of whoever... I forgot the dude's name. Whoever made this show, I would be f***ing livid, bro. I would literally... I'd be goddamn suicidal nearly every day if I found out I couldn't charge the person that was stealing from me. Because they can't charge him, bro. It's probably like 20 years later. It was 20 years later, too. So... The what were they gonna do, bro? It's probably the statute of limitations. They couldn't charge them. And they wrote a book about it, too. I don't know that dude lives himself every day. 20 explaining to him how they did it. I would have crashed out. Back in 2003, while the consortium collected cash, the lives of Charles, Diana, and Taquin were destroyed. The Ingrams faced constant harassment and humiliation in public. Their cat was shot dead with an air gun. They had bags of vomit thrown at their home. Cat? Fuck did the cat do? What did the cat do? Huh? Yo, the cat was chilling, bro. The cat didn't know like it was eating the, the food it was eating was from was from you feel me some criminals? Come on, leave the cat out of this. The cat wasn't it didn't know it was it was living off the, the, the money of, of criminal money is come on. Home windows broken. Their three daughters have been bullied at school. Charles resigned from the army. The family went bankrupt. Shit, bro. If I'm like, bro, if I'm one of the kids at the school, I'm gonna try to be friends with the daughters so I could like get some money or something like that from them. See, these kids not thinking, bro. These kids not thinking. But Whitok resigned from his lecturer's job, and perhaps most absurd of all, he had to trademark his name to stop a company from naming cough medicine after him. Damn. That's tough, buddy. Um, <clears throat> uh, W video though from this creator. Go check him out. Yeah, I don't know how to get on the show. If you guys can let me know how to get on the show, I will be getting on that show and I will be winning. I'll be the first black man to win who wants to be a millionaire. And I feel like I'm the smartest to do it. I'm the smartest creator to really do it. So uh, just let me know how to get it on. Get on it and yeah, I'll do it. All right. I'll hook you up real quick. Say less. Say less. Uh, but yeah, if you're watching this on the tube, join the Discord.